Hi everybody, welcome to the latest episode of the SCU Show. I'm your host, SCU. This is episode number 59. We're almost right there, right next to the big 6-0. So, uh, once again, just want to thank everybody for listening, for watching. YouTube, we are on Spotify. And of course, we are also on Anchor. We are sponsored by Anchor. If you're looking to create a podcast of your own, it's a great idea. It really is. It's a tremendous podcast platform. Go, go check it out. I really recommend it. All right, let's get started here. We got a lot of bigger show than we did last week. I know last week we did have a lackluster show, and that is, and if you know the phrase, failure to prepare is preparing to fail, and that's kind of what I did last week. I was like, I need to get a show out, and really, it's just not what it's about. It's not just about getting a show out and doing a show. You have to be absolutely ready to do a show, and I wasn't last week. I wasn't ready last week. I'm ready now, and let's go. Let's start with something I've had. I've had my mind on this for well, quite a while now. And I've really been thinking about this. And I'm like, wow, this makes sense. All right, so the Pittsburgh Steelers started out 11 and 0 last year, and everybody crapped on them. They were like, you know, they went what 12 and 4, 11, 13 and 3, something like that. And, oh, they lost to the Washington team. How could you lose to a team like that? Oh my goodness! And then, oh, they lost to the Bills. Holy crap, they're a terrible team. <sighs> Let's take a breather, people. The Steelers are a talented team. Let's not dispute that. They are an absolutely talented team. They showed us that last year, obviously, 11-0 and a start. That defense was absolutely spectacular. Not to mention, they lost several key players, including the biggest one, of my opinion, Devin Bush. That was a huge loss for them. Huge, monumental loss on defense for them. And he still had the number one rate defense in the NFL. First 11 weeks, they were the top top defense in the NFL without Devin Bush or 10 or whatever however long he was out for that's a huge loss and they still shine on defense they'll have the best defense in the league the problem is not what the problem with the Steelers and the fact that they all struggled and everyone's you know blaming Big Ben Roethlisberger it's not Ben's fault it's his receivers you do realize that the Steelers at one point led the league in drops and did you watch those games they lost Drop central. It was horrendous. It was absolutely horrendous. The fact that his receivers, who are talented receivers, Juju Smith Schuster is a talented receiver. Deontay Johnson is a talented receiver. James Washington is a talented receiver. This there is a talented group in Pittsburgh. And they led the league in drops. You can't do that. That is the big thing that killed them. That is why they struggled at the end of the year. That's why. Well, the, the, I won't say that the loss to the Browns had anything to do with it. The loss to the Browns, they just got their own way, pretty much, in the wild card. They are a very talented team. It has nothing to do with Big Ben Roethlisberger. They're going to be... I know, they're, again, they're going to be a great team next year, once again. The Pittsburgh Steelers are the strongest team in the AFC North right now. The Bengals, they have a talented quarterback, Joe Burrow. They don't have... A talented number one receiver, really. They really don't. You know, AJ Green, all, always injured. You know, he's always missing time, all this and that. And I think the Bengals go ahead and get the top offensive tackle and Penny Sewell from Oregon. I think that helps him out. But it's like the Seals are a better team. Baltimore. Ravens are struggling. They, I mean, I follow a couple guys on Twitter who know about the Ravens. Ravens don't have a number one receiver. Hollywood Brown. He's coming more of a bust than a beauty. And I hate to say it. I was a big fan of Hollywood Brown coming out of Oklahoma. And I was hoping him and Lamar Jackson would make beautiful music together. Hollywood's not showing up. He just hasn't. It's unfortunate. So now the Ravens, you got to go get yourself a new top a top receiver pretty much. Because it's not going to be Hollywood Brown. Now the top receiver right now for the, for the Baltimore, it's Mark Andrews. Mark Andrews is the top receiver in Baltimore. He's the tight end. That says the, that's the story of the Baltimore Ravens offense. And Cleveland, they're good. They made the playoffs. They won a playoff game. Congratulations. But are you going to do it again next year? This is the year where you're like, okay, is Baker Mayfield our guy? Because that, according to Alex Curry, the news she does on the Herbert Collin Coward last week, the Browns are looking to pick up his fifth-year option. That's great. Congratulations to Baker Mayfield. But is he going to have another great season? Is he going to do well? Are the Browns going to be good? Because really, that, was, that, that run game really helped the Browns more than the pass game did. 
And their defense did well as well. But they're not as strong as Pittsburgh either. I would question if they're stronger than Cincinnati or Baltimore. So point being, at the end of the day, let's calm down about the Steelers. They are the strongest team in the AFC North. And the thing that killed them is the drops. This has nothing to do with Big Ben. It had to do with the Steelers dropping the ball over and over again. Yes, Big Ben threw some bad picks, but his receivers did not help him much at all. And another thing, I wouldn't be surprised if the Steelers told Juju Smith-Schuster to kick rocks this offseason. I know my boy Moose Gibson is not a big fan of Juju Smith-Schuster because he's a TikTok dancer and that's he kind of win, you know, does more dancing than he does scoring and all that good stuff. I remember when Antonio Brown had left Pittsburgh. I said, it's time for Juju Smith-Schuster to step up and be that one, number one. And I firmly believed he was going to be. Now, I would just, if I'm the Steelers, I'd tell him to kick rocks. Go dance somewhere else on another team. Let us figure stuff out. I don't know who the top receiver is going to be in Pittsburgh now. It could be Deontay Johnson. It could be James Washington. It could be Chase Claypool could be it. I forgot to mention his name. Chase Claypool could be the top ne- the next top guy in Pittsburgh. All I know is it's not Juju Smith-Schuster. He's shown us that on and off the field. So let's go again. Let's calm down. Pittsburgh, no problems. Not at all. I have, I have no – I would – I'm picking them right now to win the AFC North in 2021 because, again, Baltimore has no receivers. Cincinnati don't have a top receiver. O-line's a little iffy. Get Penny Sewell. He's going to be the top offensive off lineman in the draft. And Cleveland, you just, yeah, again, you just don't know. Is OBJ going to come back? They do better without OBJ. If he comes back, or you know, are they going to be a great team again? I don't know. I don't think so. So, Steelers, now is the time. If all you have Big Ben, take advantage and – Control the AFC North. Just control it. It's simple as that. All right. So let's get into the, a little bit of NBA here because as of recording of this video, tonight is the All Star Game. I'm not watching it because I don't have cable TV. I have uh, streaming TV and I don't pay for it, so I just get this free thing. You know, Pluto TV. You guys know what it is. If you do, you know how great it is. And all I watch on there is Hell's Kitchen and Storage Wars. No NBA. But anyway. So look, you, you know, we have the NBA break right now, and we're going to the second half by the time the podcast comes out. It'll be the second half of the NBA season. And I said it last week, the Brooklyn Nets are, once again, tops in the NBA right now. Yes, they're behind Philadelphia, one game behind in the East. They're second in the East right now, behind Philadelphia. They don't have Kevin Durant. The Nets are without Kevin Durant. When Kevin Durant comes back, the Nets are going to run over everybody in the Eastern Conference. Not to mention today, again, podcast has been recorded on a Sunday. They just signed Blake Griffin. Now, Blake Griffin is not going to do much. He's not going to, you know, oh, he's so amazing. Oh, my goodness. I love what you know, the Nets signed Blake Griffin. No, he's not that big of a signing. He's a former great player. He's lost his touch. He'll be an asset. Or liability, whichever the word. He won't be that big help for the Nets. But when they get Kevin Garnett back, the Brooklyn Nets are going to run through the Eastern Conference in the second half of the season. And it's going to be, as I said about the Sixers, it's going to be spectacular what the Nets will do. There's no competition in the East. You look at it right now. The Toronto, they're supposed to be a talented team. They're the AC right now. Chicago, they're not, they're not going to win anything in the postseason. The Sixers, I would take the Nets over the Sixers in a seven-game series all day. There's no competition. The Celtics are struggling. You know, now I'm starting to question what are we, what are they going to do with Brad Stevens? Are they going to is he on the hot seat? I don't know. Maybe. There's no competition for the Nets in the East. And when Kevin Durant comes back, it's just going to get even worse for all the other teams in the Eastern Conference. It's just going to be really bad. All right, now let's have a little fun here. So I just talked about how the Nets are running the East. They are going to run the East all through the rest of the half, the second half of the season, whatever the case is. But the West, a whole different story in the Western Conference. Wide open. Absolutely wide open. Of course, you have the eight teams currently in the Western Conference right now. And I'll get my list for one second. I got my list here. The one seed... Okay, we'll go to C's. I'll just go to the, how they have ranked these eight teams in the Western Conference right now. Let's just do that. Number eight, San Antonio. They're obviously not the same team. 
Last year, I missed the postseason. First time I'd regret Popovich. They lost everybody. Everybody's gone. Kawhi Leonard, gone. Been gone. Tony Dungy, Tony, Tony, Tim Duncan, excuse me, retired. Manager only gone. Tony Parker, gone. All these, well, Mark Soldiers, not the same guy. It's all, it's a, it's a mess in San Antonio. They're just not that talented of a team. Number seven, nobody's going to like this. Number seven, the Clippers. Paul George has missed a bunch of games this year so far. It's like 13 games or something, I think. Around there, he missed a multitude of games. And the Clippers, they're winning. They're, you know, okay, it's cool. They're winning and everything. But when it comes to the postseason, what are they going to do? Probably not much. And that's the that's why I have the Clippers at number seven right now. Number six, I put Denver. Yeah. Nikol Jokic, show uh, Nikol Jokic MVP. There are more talented teams, more talented players than Nikol Jokic. And the Nuggets, they're interesting, but they're not that. They're, you know, I mean, last year, they overcame two 3-1 deficits. But the fact is, they had two 3-1 deficits last year in the postseason. Not that, that excited of a team. And I don't know about Nikola Djokovic being MVP because there are a lot of more talented players than him. I'll go back to my list real quick. So yes, number five, uh, Dallas. Hello. Luka Doncic over Nikola Djokovic any day. Any day. I'm taking... Duka Donkish over Nikol Djokic. I have Luka Donkish in the MVP race. Now, I don't know who's going to win the MVP. I don't have a list like, you know, who's you know, top five MVP candidates or anything. But all I hear about on SportsCenter, and all I see online, Luka Donkish has another great game. Dallas is winning. They're at the bottom of the West right now. As far as playoffs, they are in the playoffs. About seven, seven seed, eight seed. But tell Luka Donkish one, uh, one way or the other. He's going to get some MVP votes. And he makes the Dallas Mavericks very special. He puts the Dallas Mavericks on the map. And he puts them number six in my rankings right now. Number four, the Portland Trailblazers. How can you not love Dame Time? The mo- the, he's got to be the most clutch player in the NBA right now. I mean, there are a few other players where you could say, Oh, what about this guy? What about this guy? What about this guy? Look at what, look at what Dame Time has done the last few years in the postseason. And in regular season as well. He's just so clutch. He's the best, I guess I would say the best game-winning shooter in the NBA. And he really is very good. And he has the Portland Trailblazers always making the plus over here. He's the leader of that team. He's a great leader. I love what he does. On off the field, I like his music too. I haven't listened to his music. I don't know who does music. So I like a guy who's versatile. I love that. So Portland Trailblazers number four. Number three, the Phoenix Suns. I mean, come on. I I'm a, I am love Chris Paul. Chris Paul is one of the best players in the NBA. Nobody can question that. But he's doing it everywhere he goes, and I think that's just great. I think that's just amazing. It's awesome. It's the coolest thing ever. Now he's just doing it everywhere. In Phoenix. Did it with the Clippers. Did it with the, when they were the New Orleans Hornets. He, all Chris Paul does is win. He might be the second best player in the NBA right now. I mean, look what he's doing with the Phoenix Suns. It's just amazing stuff. Him and Devin Booker, of course, you can't deny Devin Booker's greatness is the other. Because the Suns went 8-0 last year in the Orlando bubble missed the playoffs. It's a shame. But right now, the Suns are the second seed in the West, right behind the Lakers. Or behind the Jazz, excuse me. And there you have it. Number three, the Suns. Number two is Utah. I give it to them. Gotta give it to them. They've, they've won. They've lost once in the last 20 some odd games. They are a very. That is an incredibly talented team. There's no questioning that. They are immaculate. They are unstoppable right now. But I said it last week on the show. If you watch that show, they're fool's gold. They're gonna. You're gonna. You know, they're gonna do great the rest of the regular season. Second half, they're gonna do fine. When it comes to the postseason, they win a playoff series. Good for them. They don't win another one. I don't see. I would. I would take the, the Sun over the Jazz in any playoff series, second round playoff series. Jazz number two as of right now. Number one, uh, it's still the Lakers. Yes, they're struggling because Anthony Davis isn't there, and their bench is not as great as it should be. But they still have the greatest player on the planet in LeBron James. So let's not doubt the Lakers at all. I said it last week. This is a team that's going to the NBA Finals. Reps at the West Conference, but most likely against the Brooklyn Nets because, again, there's no competition in the East. Lakers are the top team in the Western Conference. 
and it's just it's just it's just going to stay that way. I don't know if for the, the doubters, I don't know what to tell you. But Lakers are the top team in the Western Conference heading in to the second half of the season. Whew. Well, that was fun, wasn't it? I know I had fun doing that. So just to recap, the best of the West, number eight. This is for the teams that are currently in the postseason as the recording of this video. Number eight, San Antonio. Seven, the Clippers. Six, the Nuggets. Five, the Mavs. Four, the Trailblazers. Three, the Suns. Two, the Jazz. And number one, the Lakers. Uh, I'm by Ryan Fnatic2 on Twitter. If you see this video or on the SCU show on Facebook, debate me. Especially at number seven. I'd love to hear people's opinions on number seven. What makes the Clippers a better team than the Suns or the Jazz or the Lakers or the Blazers? I don't see it. Let me know what you think. All right, let's get back, back to the NFL. So as you know, I've said it on the show already. I had COVID-19 right after Thanksgiving. I went to Florida, came back, felt chilly. As soon like the night I got back, I felt chills. Next day, I went to our friend Valeria's house. I was weak in the knees. I couldn't walk. I had to lay down. I wanted to fall asleep twice. And of course, I appreciate my friends for asking if I was okay. Thank you, Valeria, for the hospitality. Wound up getting COVID. In a hospital for a month. Missed the show for a month. Actually, said for two months because I didn't do it after I moved down to Virginia again after the new, right before the new year. So I'm pretty much going to talk about the playoffs. All right, well, let's talk about the playoffs now. I know we're, we shouldn't be backtracking. We should more be moving forward. But let's backtrack. If I were to be on the show, come the time that the playoffs were starting, who would I have picked from the wild card, the division, the AFC Championship, the NFC Championship, to the Super Bowl? Let's go over it. Let's start with the wild card. I would have taken the Bills over the Colts. The Bills are too, they're, they're, they're such a talented team. They, I knew they were going to beat the Colts. But evidently, they did. I would have taken the Seahawks over the Rams. The Seahawks, the Rams were starting John Walford. A backup quarterback from the Alliance of American Football, which obviously failed after two months, which was a damn shame because it was a great league to watch. And, of course, the Rams' defense over overpowered Russell Wilson and the Seahawks. And now look at the trouble they're all having now up in Seattle. Bucks over Washington. Taylor Heineke is going to win a playoff game? I don't think so. <laughs> Come on. I would pick Tennessee over Baltimore. But, I mean, we saw it was pretty much looking in a mirror. We saw what we saw last year. We saw the same thing. I would I would assume it would have been the same thing. Derek Henry over the Ravens defense. But they did a really the Baltimore did a very good job shutting down the Tennessee offense. Uh Bears, there was no way they're beating the Saints, right? I mean, come on, that last touchdown in garbage time. Crap. I would have picked the Steelers over the Browns. Steelers got in their own way in that game. Browns kicked their asses. I'm I'm proud. I'm happy for the Browns for winning a playoff game. Kind of like how people didn't see the Cubs win a World Series after 108 years. I got to see, in my life, the Cleveland Browns win a playoff game. And I'm proud of that. That would have pinned the, that would have pinned the Chiefs and Titans, Bills and Steelers, Packers and Bucks, and the Seahawks and Saints in the NFC Division in the division round. Would have taken the Chiefs over the Titans. They had to beat them last year. Chiefs are still a great, better team. They would have won somehow. Would have taken the Bills over the Steelers again. I know the Steelers, I said the, you know, the Steelers are a very talented team, but Buffalo was just on their, I don't want to say on their high horse. They were just up there. They were too talented not to lose, not to not make the AFC Championship game pretty much. So I would have taken the Bills over the Steelers. Packers, Bucks, we did get them in the NFC Championship game. I would have picked it for the division round. I would have taken Green Bay over Tampa Bay. Aaron Rodgers had MVP season. Devontae Adams, I said it before the season. I said Devontae Adams is going to be the number one receiver in the league. Lo and behold, Devontae Adams, the number one receiver in the league for the Packers. I would have taken them over the Bucs. Of course, the Bucs beat them in the NFC Championship game. I would have picked the upset. Seahawks in New Orleans over the Saints. Would have picked it. Absolutely. I would have said, I would have, I could picture it now. I would have seen Cam Jordan running after Russell Wilson. As he's rolling out to his right, chucking a deep pass, and DK Metcalf beats Marshawn Lattimore for a touchdown. Not saying that's how the Seahawks would have won. That would have been a story of the game if I had gone the way I've seen it. Seahawks would have gone into New Orleans, beat the Saints, and Drew Brees would have lost the division round either way. 
Yeah. NFC Championship game, Packers Seahawks. Uh, we saw last year, Packers beat the Seahawks handily. See him? I just would have seen. I just don't can't. Uh, Aaron Rodgers MVP. You can't deny his greatness. As good as Russell Wilson is, that offensive line against Preston Smith, Zaria Smith. Uh uh-uh, not today. Packers would have gone to the Super Bowl. Wraps with the NFC. And then uh, pretty much the AFC Championship game is what it is. Chiefs over the Bills. Now, I was surprised. Signed 9 nothing Buffalo over Kansas City. I was like, what the hell is going on here? What is going on? Of course, you know, the Chiefs came back to life. Went out to win. So I would have had the Packers and the Chiefs in Super Bowl 55. And while I really admire Aaron Rodgers' greatness, two guys, him and Devontae Adams, it wasn't going to get the job. It was not going to get the job done. I would have had the Chiefs defeating the Packers in Super Bowl 55 in Tampa. And there you have it. Well, yeah, what a great show we had today, this week. I'm taking off next week. I'm going away for the week weekend, so I won't be here to do the show. A little update. I'm starting my full time at my one job tomorrow. I'm working 11 to 3 and then 5 to 9 Monday to Friday. And so pretty much we'll be recording this podcast over the weekend, either Saturday or Sunday. We are working towards having guests on through Zoom. We're going to make it work somehow, some way. I'm excited. I can't wait to have guests on this show to make the show even better. And, uh, yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of the SC Show. This has been episode 59. Again, we are off next week. We will be back the weekend of the 20th, the third week of March. Good luck to the Fs, the Seams, and the Fan Control Football. Uh, I'll take the Beasts to win the championship because they, I mean, come on. They lost last last night on a Hail Mary to a team that has Josh Gordon. So take away nothing from the Beasts. They've been dominant all season. I see they keep going to beat whoever they beat in the playoffs and then beat whoever they beat in the championship game. But that's it, everybody. This Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. This has been episode number 59 of the SEU Show.